Hello and welcome, this is Roofmonger, and this is the Tips and Tricks Guide for Videl. So as always in these kind of guides, uh, first we'll start a little basic here, we're going to be covering the moveset here, talking about the specials and supers, uh, then we're going to be getting into honestly some uh, gimmicky territory, but gimmicky in a good way, uh, we're going to be talking about setups, uh, we're going to be talking about this mysterious Siaman character, who is he, what can he do, and a whole bunch more. So without any further ado, let's get right to it. So now talking about our special and supers, the first thing let's talk about here is the Justice Combination. So this is technically a command normal and not a uh, special move, but still it's a uh, very key. So it's forward and heavy attack, and as you can see here, she leaps forward quite a bit. Now while this honestly has dubious use in like neutral play and not, like using it on its own, uh, it is impossibly crucial for like her whole combo structure. Like the corner carry, as you can see there, is very extreme. Um, and you know, gets you more damage, and yeah, it's just, uh, while you don't need to think about it in any way other than a combo kind of way for the most part, at least until, you know, tech is found later on in the future, um, it is basically super key to most of her combo structures, so you always have to keep it in mind. Now let's talk the Videl Rush. Now of all her special moves, this is easily and wildly the most important one. Uh, basically everything that Videl is, is off this move. Uh, so it's a chaining move. Uh, so we have a quarter circle forward, light, medium, heavy is our starter. Uh, this is light, this is medium, and this is heavy. Uh, for the most part in combos, you're going to be using medium as it uh, has all the same follow-ups. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't cost a bar like the heavy and does more damage than the light. Uh, so now, the follow-up. So regardless of what your starter is, uh, the follow-ups are different depending on your button presses. So if you just do it as is, you know, hey, you're not going to get anything. Now if you hit light... As see here, we get an overhead, and this is a true overhead. So if the enemy uh, is crouching, they must indeed stand to block it. Now, if we hit medium as our follow-up here, instead of that overhead, we're going to get a giant flip over cross-up. So this must be blocked on the other side. And uh, just so you know, this does steal the corner. So even in the corner where you're normally not allowed to, uh, you know, make the enemy block cross-up, even this will make them block cross-up. Otherwise, they will get hit. And the final option here is the heavy. So if we do this and go for the heavy, it will burn a bar. And right there, you saw it kind of missed. So there's a reason for that. So this goes right into the Frankensteiner move. And if they are standing, this becomes a true command grab, and they are just got. End of story. So keep that in mind. If they are asleep at the wheel and uh, not crouch blocking, uh, which is very reasonable considering this is an overhead, so they have to sand block it or get hit, uh, or they can choose the reflect, which leaves them standing anyways. Uh, that kind of just goes into the whole big thing. Uh, so that's your cross-up, and now we go back to light, because the light's not done yet. If you keep jamming on the light, stuff keeps happening. So that's our third hit here. These are these multi-punches. And then if we do our fourth hit, it does the rising knee. And also, keep in mind, after the uh, rising knee in the corner, you are allowed to air dash afterwards, and you can keep the combo structure going. As you can see there. So... Uh, super, 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 I can't stress this enough, important to her combo structure and easily her most important special move. Also, just to mention, uh, all versions of the Videl Rush are indeed air okay. Uh, kind of boring because uh, uh, none of the uh, unique follow-ups will work anymore. Uh, it's just going to be the kick into the knee. Next up here, we have the Frankensteiner, Scott Steiner's signature move. And uh, Videl is not quite Big Papa Pump, but she tries her best. Uh, so this is quarter circle, backlight, medium, and heavy. Uh, this is the light version, and these are all true command grabs, by the way. Uh, so you can set the enemy to block, and they can block just fine. They aren't blocking this. Uh, so you dunk them on the head, that's just the light version. Here is the medium version, where the Great Saiyan Man will appear. And here is the EX version. And Great Saiyan Man will appear, and you can do a bit of a follow-up. So say we do the X version here, and then we can just homing dash and keep going from there. Uh, all these versions are air okay as well, so you can do these from the air. Uh, one thing to note here, so the medium and EX versions of the move, uh, you can actually hold the button and get a different version. So that was the medium, and here's me holding the button, and I get a wall bounce, but that's it. And much the same here, me holding EX, wall bounce, that's it. So, what does this mean? Well, you can kind of go for different combo structures, uh, depending on what you might be looking for. Uh, so, 
if you are looking, especially in the corner, uh, it's definitely for the most part best to hold them as you can get uh, much more damaging combos than you could otherwise. And plus, you know, uh, in the case of the EX version, you know, you don't lose the corner. Uh, so yeah, uh, for medium and EX versions, please hold the button in the corner to make sure you can get some more combo value out of it. So next up we have the Moon Salt Kick. That's down, down, light, medium, and heavy. This is light version. This is the medium version as it goes up a bit higher. This is the heavy version. Uh, so this is a cross-up move, meaning this will have to be blocked the other way. And this is an airborne move, so meaning uh, it gets down heavy pretty much freely if you're doing it kind of raw. Now, uh, once again to mention, once again, these moves will steal the corner. So if you're back into the wall, you will have to block the other way. Um, you are not allowed to just have that corner protection like you normally do. Uh, no matter what I'm doing here, I cannot take the corner from the enemy. Uh, so they only have to worry about blocking same side. And this says no, you gotta worry about blocking both sides. So EX does the most damage, is a bit quicker than the other versions here, uh, especially the medium. Medium does more damage than light, but it has a lot more startup. Uh, although it is important in other ways, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's basically just a built-in mix-up mechanic. The final of our special moves is the Rising Eagle. Uh, not Rising Eagle Knee, not Rising Eagle Attack, just Rising Eagle. And uh, yeah, you've probably seen moves like this in fighting games before. Uh, so kind of is what it looks like. It is an uppercut style move. And uh, just like uppercut style moves, it is full invincible from frame one. So, uh, of the uppercut style moves, it's a little slower than most. Like, I wouldn't say it's necessarily as good as, like, Vegeta's or something. Uh, but still, a full Invincible is incredibly rare in this game. And if you got it, it is always absolutely better than not having it. So, um, if you just want to mash it out in strings or something, uh, make people scared of the fact that you know that you're just going to be a crazy person, uh, mash DP and the Vanish going to a combo or something, hey, it's all good. Uh... So Videl is one of the very few characters to have a meterless, invincible move. So now moving on to her uh, first level 1 super, uh, this is definitely one of the most unique level 1 supers in the game. Now on a surface, it doesn't look like much, right? Um, and you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at it, uh, but you are allowed to special cancel anything cancelled the second hit. So if you want to go, say, right into a homing dash and keep comboing, hey, you totally can. Uh, say you're in the corner and feel a little sassy here, I want to try something like this, where you can go this uh, into a Gohan call, into a combo, keep your combo going. Hey, you can do that just as well as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's very unique. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, when it comes to like DHD stuff, you know, you can call your other characters. Like that. None, none of that's different, right? That's all the same as it always is. Uh, but the fact that you can keep going so low after uh, your level one. Uh, where pretty much no other character can outside of really edge case situations uh, is pretty interesting and it leads to a lot of unique combo structures for Videl. Our next level 1 super here is the Defender of Love and Justice, the Great Saiyaman. This is a uh, quarter circle forward uh, level 1 super and it doesn't look like much does it. Uh, so what You're this is is up. a counter super. So if Videl is hit during this, Saiyaman will come and smack them. Now you might notice he just came and hit him. Uh, so, uh, that is because we've already powered up. There's a power up mechanic. So, say if we take this off powered up and we try again, we're gonna get a little bit of a cinematic. As you can see there, it says power up on the side. Uh, so basically, what this means here is all of his moves, no matter what he is, uh, no matter what situation you call him, including supers. Uh, the Great Saiyan Man will do more damage. Now one thing, despite being a counter super, this super is not a frame one super. So you can see right there, I was counter hit out of it. Um, so you are not going to wake up with this for the most part. Uh, you will get smacked in the noggin if you're trying to wake up with this as a counter super. It's not going to work that way. Uh, but for calling out obvious attacks, for uh, say uh, dunking on guard cancels, this is perfect and great. Videl has two level threes. The first one here is the Justice Rush, and she'll just basically do a big hit here with the Great Saiyan Man, and lovely little cinematic here, Giant Boot, Love Eternal, and big ol' smack go from there. Uh, so while there is some set play to be had from it, and then we'll talk about that later, uh, as far as level three goes, uh, it's pretty stock. There's not too much fancy to it. Uh, you see here, the hitbox is not really much to talk about. Uh, and it just kind of is what it is. Uh, but now speaking of level threes, uh, going on from that. 
So, uh, Videl, if uh, this is assuming a default controller, if you hold R2 while you're getting hit and you're on the ground, she'll do basically a Frieza style super. Uh, so, you will stay on the ground and the Great Cyberman will do basically his level 3. Uh, I wonder who else does that. And he'll just kind of save your bacon. Now, keep in mind, this move is slow. Uh, the enemy has a lot of opportunities to guard against this. Um, unless they're only if they're attacking like a madman, will you really catch them with it? So its use is somewhat debatable. But if you are up against that so-called madman, then uh, at the very least you can kind of do that at least once to keep them honest and be like, oh yeah, that is the thing I need to be aware of and kind of scare them off further aggression. Now, just to talk on Videl's assist here, uh, it's actually very similar to an assist you've already seen in this game. And that's the uh, old Bardock here. Uh, it's kind of almost one to one, although a bit different. Um, the biggest difference between hers and Bardock's is like from roughly this range, Bardock's gonna whiff and Videl, well, she hits. Uh, it starts up a little bit slower, but uh, it has the rage and, uh, range advantage over Bardock. Uh, so we still whiff there, but just see even a little closer out. We get uh, Bardock, but we hit with Videl. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it. So uh, if you're doing like a, any given combo structure here, uh, just like Bardock, uh, Videl will leave you standing, and that's uh, very important. Uh, so you don't have to worry about immediately transitioning to a juggle combo. I uh, can kind of just keep uh, whatever grounded plans you have from there. Uh, so yeah, so any assist that leaves people grounded, as they are quite rare in this game, there's not many people that can do it. Uh, is very strong and assist wise, Videl definitely has a really good assist. Okay, so now let's talk the Great Saiyan Man, as uh, this is obviously a very central mechanic to Videl. Uh, so, what is the Great Saiyan Man? Well, uh, spoiler, he's Gohan. I know not many people want me to say that, but it's true. He's Gohan, and he's got a lot of unique properties. So, one, let's just go over the basic moves here. So, if you hit your S button here, your unique button, this is Stand S. He'll rush forward and punch. Down S, he'll kind of lob a little key blast and do a big old Yahoo and disappear. If you do it in the air, it's a massive zero commitment dive kick. Uh, so, you know, if he gets smacked, well, Videl's not getting smacked, right? So, uh, really good to control screen. And if you do down S in the air, it'll come down and stomp above the foe's head. And this will be, uh, no matter where the enemy is on the screen, uh, Gohan will always teleport to where they are and go above their head. So it's not range dependent. It is always where the enemy is going to be. Uh, now to quickly mention the Great Simon calls, uh, durability. Uh, so the uh, down S little projectile chucks here, uh, as far as projectile durability goes, uh, it's not going to stand up to the good stuff, let's put it that way. Uh, however, uh, the stand S call is durable enough to go through even stronger weak key blasts like Broly. As you can see here, uh, went through all of them and smacked them. So he will deflect everything that's a basic key blast, uh, even a heavier version like Broly or Nappa. Now that said, um, we do have to come to Jiren, because Jiren is a very unique key blast, at least compared to the rest of the cast, in that it's not quite a proper projectile, uh, but when it comes to uh, just this kind of stuff here, um, gotta keep in mind here, Great Time Man, he's gonna get bonked. Uh, and of course, when it comes to like standard projectiles like beams and like, uh, Gohan isn't up to the task and he will get blown away. So we mentioned before about the fact Gohan has uh, power-up versions here, uh, depending if you get that counter super off or not. Uh, so this affects all aspects of the Great Saiyan Man showing up. So here's a basic version of the Stand S, does 850. Uh, we switch to the powered-up version, so say we successfully got the counter, does a cool thousand there. Uh, and this is true across all moves that uh, feature Gohan, doesn't really matter. And this also includes their minimum damage values. So let's use, say, the level 3. Uh, this is going to be a raw level 3. Uh, but uh, as a raw level 3 here, let's look at the damage value. So 4,099. Pretty cool. That's nice. So now we switch over to the power version. And what's going to happen? A spoiler. It's going to do more damage. I already know. That's what I'm telling you. That's <laughs> uh, 4,387. And once again, this will affect the uh, minimum damage values as well. And uh, a longer combo. This will also affect the wake up level 3 as well. So any single move with Gohan. If he shows up at all in the move, that move is going to do more damage uh, with a higher minimum damage value uh, if it is in the uh, powered up state. And that is pretty dang handy. 
All right, so now let's talk about her dodge. Now, I did make a video separately on the dodge, and it'll be included at the end of the video, so I don't want to belabor a lot of the points to death. Uh, but long story short, uh, the dodge can basically go through all moves. Um, as you can see here, if you successfully dodge an attack, you'll see that little sphere go around Videl, uh, and she has a little pe uh, period of brief invincibility if you do successfully dodge an attack. Um, if you uh, whiff, then it's just like a reflect because she does not have a reflect. Uh, she instead has this uh, unique dodge. Uh, then you know you'll get cooked just like anybody else whiffing a reflect, right? Uh, so basically, for the purposes of how the game considers things, uh, while the, uh, Videl is dodging, she's basically intangible. Uh, she is not on the game map, and people can pass through her freely. Uh, so say if people want to run, and it just goes through you. Uh, it is, however, not immune to throws of all kinds, be it dragon rushes or command grabs. Now, that all said, uh, let's talk a fun little gimmick. Uh, so we just mentioned how people can pass through you, so let's just show you uh, an example of that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to jump, and before I complete my arc over Gohan's head, I'm going to call the assist so he's somewhat sandwiched. And obviously, if you're aware of how the game works, there's cross-up protection, like, so I can't cross him up with the assist, that's not what's going to happen here. Uh, but still, we're going to show you something a little interesting. So yeah, I'm on the other side. Uh, the block son of the assist pushed Gohan through me during my intangibility frames. Uh, meaning, uh, basically we can do fun little mix-ups like this. And there we go, we just made you do a left-right cross-up uh, on the ground. Uh, so yeah, and you can choose depending on when you vanish, just stay on the same side. Uh, this is all completely dependent on the uh, block stun uh, and pushback of a move. So if a move like keeps people mostly on place and block, uh, like with Tien, it's not going to work quite as well. Because uh, you don't quite have the pushback of, uh, say, uh, Cell's Beam. Uh, but yeah, play around with it. Uh, super, or sorry, assist that is, with a strong pushback on block. Can lead to little situations where you're basically abusing the block stun. Uh, use your intangibility of the dodge. And kind of left-right cross up them in, while you're dodging. And that's pretty neat. Now, uh, taking dodge to the ultimate limit. Um, Videl, as we mentioned before, is intangible on screen. So basically, except for the purposes of throws, uh, she just isn't on the screen when she's dodging. Uh, at least in the first few frames of it. Uh, so it goes all the way to the end of the Rainbow Road because, yo, she can dodge sparking blast activations. Uh, and that's definitely unique to her if you're not aware. Uh, when it comes to reflect, uh, you absolutely cannot reflect a sparking blast. Uh, you will just get blown out of the water. Now, you are able to uh, freely uh, block a sparking blast activation, absolutely, uh, if you want to defend yourself from it, but uh, you are not able to normally just avoid it <laughs> point blank. Uh, either you got to get hit or you got block, right? Uh, and she can do so. Now, just so you know, the uh, duration of the dodge kind of leaves it so she can't really punish it. Uh, but she's definitely going to be advantage against the person doing the uh, spark. So at the very least, if you dodge it in their face, uh, they got to respect you a bit and kind of give up their turn, which is definitely the last thing they were thinking about uh, if they're hitting the sparking blast button. Now, I do want to talk about some fun pressure she has uh, stemming from her jumping down S. Uh, so, in the corner, as long as you do a combo where you have already used your smash attack, uh, meaning, so you can't just uh, do the auto combo get the spike, you don't want that spike. Uh, so, say if we use a down heavy, for example, or sorry, stand heavy, for example, uh, we do a basic air combo here, and we end up with our auto combo finisher, and it doesn't spike to the ground. That is what we're looking for in this situation here. So, what we can do then is at the end of this uh, little string here, call Gohan down S. And uh, the timing works out just really well. Uh, so, say the enemy wants to down heavy you, right? Uh, so, you know, down heavy being the universal kind of anti-air attack in this game here. Um, Gohan isn't really phased by it. In fact, if they try it, they'll get counter hit right out of it. Like, Dunzo, he can't do anything about it. Um, all the enemy can really do is either uh, delay their wake up or reflect. Otherwise, they gotta block. End of story. Uh, even characters like Broly who have armor startups on the uh, down heavies, uh, his armor just does not start up fast enough to stop this. So basically, once it comes to that point, uh, say the enemy is going to start reflecting here. Uh, let's set a reflect here. 
Will the reflect work? Absolutely. It will work. But... As you can see here, uh, we can, unless they double reflect, we can still get our pressure. So that's kind of the name of the game right there. Is uh, no matter what we're going to be doing here, and uh, they reflect or block or whatever, and like basically anything short of them delay, wake up, or doing a true invincible move, uh, Gohan's going to smack them, make them block, whatever, and then we can just kind of start our pressure from there. So once again, no down heavy starters here. We need to keep the smash uh, property gone, specifically. Call Gohan down has, and then we just uh, go from there. Go for a down L low, uh, instant overhead H mix up or whatever. Uh, the world's your oyster, but basically it's a very simple pressure setup that a lot of people uh, actually somewhat struggle to deal with. All right, now let's show you a fun little gimmick in regards to trunks. Uh, but first up here, just so you know, uh, Videl's auto combo here. Uh, the last bit is indeed a true grab. So if the enemy is set to block here, you know, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, the grab won't hit him or nothing, right? Uh, but if we whiff it, space it just enough, uh, the grab will be the last hit and that will hit him, right? So the enemy is set to guard everything, but uh, the final hit is a true grab. Um, now, there used to be a time when, like, you know, Android 16 could, like, uh, delay his normals and grab you and stuff. That's all gone. That's been since nerfed, right? Uh, but with the power of the Trunks Assist and the fact that it's the lowest block stun assist in the game, we can get a little bit dirty with this. Uh, so normally you're not allowed in any way, shape, or form to delay your auto combo and get that grab while they're blocking. If they block, that's it. You're not getting that grab, right? Uh, but due to how the game works, uh, if an assist hits after a move, uh, whatever, and regardless of insist, any move that hits another uh, after another move that's blocked, its block stun value will overwrite the last move. So if I do this and call Trunks, then Trunks is the more recent one. So uh, Trunks' block stun will overwrite it. Now, most situations, um, in the end, you're just adding more block stun, so it doesn't really matter. However, in this situation... As you can see right there, we grabbed him just fine. So what happened there is Trunks' is very low block stun overwritten the uh, fairly decent block stun of the second hit of the auto combo, and it let us grab him out because he returned the neutral when that grab came out. So it's just like this scenario here. He, he's not doing anything, right? So uh, we're able to grab him using our auto combo. So if you uh, tailor your block strings to do this, you can actually, on purpose, uh, in the middle of a block string, grab someone, and I can guarantee you they're not going to be looking out for that the first time. So as you can see right there, uh, clean as day, we just called them in the middle of the block string and it hit them just fine. And if it managed to combo anyways, hey, all the better, because it actually works as a natural combo too. So uh, this is a very tricky thing, it's a very sneaky thing, and uh, but basically this is going to hit someone the first time every time. No one's going to be looking for this here. No one's expecting Videl to command grab them in the middle of a block string. And you are kind of, for lack of a better, nicer term, you're kind of abusing how the uh, game reads block stun. Uh, but still, keep it in mind here, because Trunk has incredibly low block stun on his assist. Uh, that, you know, higher numbers is not always better. So in this specific scenario, uh, we can kind of get really cheeky and sneak in uh, grabs when a lot of other characters cannot. Now let's talk about the restand technique. Uh, this is a very strong technique, although it does kind of have one key mega flaw. Uh, but if the opponent does not know this key mega flaw, then it's kind of a season pass to get away with a lot of dirt, right? Uh, so, uh, first up here, uh, what we're going to be doing here is just using the uh, basic uh, rush string here, uh, going into the medium ender specifically. Uh, so, by itself, it is a natural combo. Now, however, if you do add, say, a bit of hits on decay in front of the moves, uh, this will become instead uh, a blockable string. So the enemy will have an uh, opportunity to block, although uh, they will have to block cross up, as you can tell. Uh, now this, in and of itself, can easily be down heavy. Like that, that's not a big deal, right? Uh, but where the magic comes in is the assist. Uh, so the assist can kind of cover uh, that period and also work uh, depending if you do it earlier or if you do it later. Also be a natural combo extension into this free stand combo. So we were hitting the enemy, and normally once you hit the enemy in the combo, uh, you smack them into the ground, and they have their options of you know back tacking, up tacking, stay on the ground, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, this restand option robs them of their ability to do any of that. They are just two feet on the ground like they were before the combo started. So once again here, we're just going to do uh, kind of basic combo structure. 
and then we call the assist to cover it. So uh, if the enemy didn't block, then hey, they get smacked. Uh, we have Trunks once again. We mentioned Trunks being kind of a low block sun assist. So let's use someone uh, like Tan has a little bit higher, although still not very high, just as an example. So you can see right there, I managed to cross up again if they managed to block it the first time and hit him on the other side yet again. Uh, so this is definitely a very powerful technique. Uh, if you want to say delay the uh, air dash a little bit, then you would hit same side or of course you just land and go from there, right? Uh, but yeah, so you can basically hit them with a bit of a combo, re-stand them so none of the protections being knocked down normally affords and keep the pressure going from there. Now, I did mention there's a bit of a fatal flaw in this plan uh, and that is just plain old Reflect. Uh, reflect does put a little bit of a damper on it. So kind of no matter what, if they Reflect right away, uh, Videl is going to be bounced off. Uh, and they, uh, depending on the, how early or late the assist call is, uh, either they get to block the assist or uh, the assist also gets reflected as well. Uh, so that you got to keep in mind. So if you're just doing this every time and they just ref the reflect will kill it dead. Uh, but one, once again, the enemy has to know that. It has to know it's a possibility, right? Um, if they are not aware with it of uh, that possibility, then hey, you probably get away with this more than a few times, right? Uh, and two, um, if you know they're going to mash reflect, uh, well then, you can kind of just let it rock, let them reflect, and, you know, then punish reflect, right? But yeah, so, uh, even if, you know, reflect kind of takes a little bit of, uh, the, uh, zing out of this, uh, once again, predictable player, someone just mashing reflect in the middle of the combo, that you can also deal with as well, uh, and it's still an interesting technique to know. So now let's talk about Videl's post level 3 uh, pressure in the corner. Uh, it's kind of easy bake, uh, just like a Bardock kind of honestly, uh, very similar if you know the Bardock stuff. So if you just simply hold up forward, I'm just holding up and forward right now, stand heavy, it connects, right? And uh, this is also indeed a safe jump, so uh, we're just going to holding up and forward right now. Uh, we're going to jump on the first possible frame, we're just going to go for jump heavy. Wake up level three. Oh, hey, we're going to have time to block. All well and good, right? Uh, so, yeah, so now that this is mentioned, so it's an easy safe jump to say the least, uh, we can kind of basically do the same Bardock stuff. Uh, so what we can do from here is we can just kind of do that uh, up forward jump and go for a light. Easy peasy. And also we can just do this, and right before the uh, land and the light, we can then air dash right off the ground and go for the quick overhead. And of course, you can just like land right, dash, right? So, uh, really easy stuff, not difficult at all. Uh, pretty easy bake oven stuff and just really strong. Like, this is the kind of Oki you do want. Um, so, whenever possible, if you can get the enemy to like roughly half their life with a level three of the combo, uh, if you basically make them guess wrong, you can kill a character straight up. And uh, that's pretty handy and it makes uh, Videl's automatically uh, one of the better level threes in the game just to have this kind of easy style of uh, Okazami afterwards. Because basically, they got a coin flip. Uh, yeah, they can reflect. Uh, that gets uh, rid of some of the options, but of course, this loses the plane of Dragon Rush. Um, and this is a natural safe jump, so. Uh, they kind of have to worry if uh, about wake up level threes because yeah, the wake up level three will beat the air dash option. It'll beat the low, but if you just go for the plain Jane uh, jump heavy, it's not going to beat that. And in fact, you'll get punished for it. Uh, but let's talk about something a little more fun and a little more gimmicky than just kind of this easy style of offense. So we're just going to go right into a level three here. Uh, if you remember your auto combo, remember how that auto combo ends in a grab. Uh, so if we just kind of dash forward here with buttons, we got gotcha. you. Uh, so if you blocked, if you reflected, um, just a simple dash forward, hit buttons, and go for that. The grab will get you. So uh, there's no defending of that. And um, the visual noise of the auto attacks, uh, you know, makes people want to block or reflect a bit more. Um, and obviously, it doesn't quite have the startup as a Dragon Rush, right? So uh, if you're just looking to uh, really honestly gimmicky uh crack someone open uh once again just dash forward and go for that auto combo mash and that command grab will take care of them so overall uh she has very strong basic oki uh and uh with little gimmicks like that don't use that every single time because you know that is readable but if you're just looking for that last ditch second i gotta get rid of this character kind of stuff uh that is exactly the kind of stuff people do not look for and uh it is pretty interesting 
So when it comes to the general game plan, uh, for the most part, Videl is absolutely a mix-up character. She wants to make you basically guess wrong uh, and then get a combo from there. So uh, when it comes to, like, say, uh, you know, a pure neutral fight, kind of close range, and when it comes to, like, a war of buttons, uh, her buttons, for the most part, are not necessarily up to task. Uh, she does have the very handy sell button of uh, she can hit stand medium, hit back and medium to get two of them in a row, but, you know, against, like, say, uh, Broly. Broly's not going to care when he can just stand jab or stand medium all day long and go from there, right? Uh, so, uh, not to say she's completely helpless and neutral, because she's not. Uh, the great Saiyaman calls, especially the uh, stand S and uh, the jumping S specifically, are amazing for spacing and range control. Uh, it's not going to win you the match in and of itself, uh, but when it comes to the point where, like, you know, you don't feel necessarily the need to risk yourself running too close in, uh, these moves are great harassment, they are great, uh, just pressure. Uh, keep in mind, too, the jump down S always teleports on top of the enemy no matter where they are. And, uh, when it comes to durability of Gohan coming in, uh, he kind of beats, you know, weak projectiles for free. He also can't reliably be smacked out of the screen. Uh, you see there, like, that's right away, uh... If you try to do it like that, that's not going to work. The only time you can really do it is uh, he doesn't become active right away, specifically on the stand S. Uh, so if you're already deep into your homing dash, he's not going to save you in that regard. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, it's pretty decent. Uh, when it comes to mix-ups, like obviously we have a lot of the standard options. Like I can do whatever block string, uh, call and assist, uh, you know, then try to like low throw overhead uh, cross up. Uh, when it comes to cross-ups, her jump medium actually is uh, quite serviceable, actually. Uh, the range is just kind of exactly what you need for a good cross-up, so that's really handy. Uh, and she also kind of has a built-in mix off her uh, chain system. Uh, it's not, you know, mind-blowing, but it's still serviceable. So once again here, uh, say we set the crouch. The second uh, light hit here is a standing overhead. Uh, so they have to block it standing. Now keep in mind, uh, if we go to uh, the enemy here, and uh, we set them to reflect. So right here, hey, they can reflect it for free. Does that mean it's not valid? No, absolutely not. Uh, because if you're willing to spin a bar, cool, your reflect just got tossed into a command grab, right? Um, so if they stand or reflect, they always have to deal with the threat of the fact that the uh, Frankensteiner's coming. Uh, you do have to burn a bar for it in the middle of the string. But uh, yeah, if you want to deal with it that way, uh, it's going to be a thing because uh, you cannot reflect a command grab. So uh, if they're the type to just mash reflect if they see it, uh, unlike, say, an Android 17, uh, Videl has more options than that. Also, uh, you can just you know, let it rock. Uh, she actually recovers fairly quickly. Uh, and you can see there, so if you attack right away, you're still going to get uh, bought by the reflect, but you can just like, see reflect and literally dragon rush someone. Uh, say there's no reflect on the table, but they're scared of hitting buttons uh, due to say you tossing out a block, uh, assist string or block string. Uh, it's literally quite simple as you can do this and then really go for it down low. You see, that's quite quick. Uh, I don't have to commit to the string in any way, shape or form. I can just literally go for that into a low uh, and continue uh, the pressure from there. Uh, so if they're fearing the overhead or, or if they're fearing the uh, grab, and they, you can just do that. Once again, you can just drag and rush from there too. Uh, you end a lot quicker than you think you can. So you can enter an air dash, although without uh, pushback from uh, an assist. If you're just point blank, uh, it's not going to work too well for you because you'll just go clear over their head unless they're like a very wide character like Broly or Android 16. But still, uh, this is one basic layer of mix-ups. So if the game plan is to get people to uh, fall for the mix-up, uh, be it whatever mix-up it is, simple or advanced, um, you're definitely going to want to run Videl as a point character, in my opinion. Her assist is nice. It's a Bardock-style assist, but she does not have Bardock's neutral. She cannot conduct herself like Bardock in neutral. Um, this kick is not Rebellion Spear, to say the least. Uh, so uh, she should be the point with uh, two assists to back her up, in my opinion. Uh, generally speaking, uh, if you're going to be running with a mix-up style game plan, uh, you want assist conducive to that, so either a very low block stun like uh, Trunks, or a very high block stun like Kid Buu or Gotenks. Uh, these, generally speaking, are going to be uh, somewhat in your favor. With a low block stun assist, we can have them in a throwable state a lot earlier than they would like to be, uh, as we showed in uh, the one gimmick earlier in the video. Uh, and of course, just, you know, uh, and able to return the neutral a lot earlier than they think, uh, not in the safety of block stun. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to work with that. And uh, say we have a high block stun assist. So we're going to be using the uh, Kid Buu assist here example. So very basic block string here. And, uh, hey, they're stuck in block stun because once again, remember how we talked about the block stun for this end so fast and Videl's back on her feet, right? So if we want to use her in that regard here, 
Like, hey, they got to block it. Uh, we can go over to the other side. We can stay same side. Uh, just so many uh, possible permutations of this uh, block string are possible. So same side. Cross up, although I missed a little timing there, but you get the idea, right? Uh, actually, very similar to how uh, Cell used to have with a Kid Boo and Gotenks himself. And uh, for this kind of pressure, guard canceling is not amazing because Videl's fine. She's in neutral. Like, she can block and do whatever, right? So if you're just looking to guard cancel right away while you're in the Kid Boo assist, Videl can just knock you out of the sky for free. <laughs> like, or block and punish or whatever. So uh, this kind of style of uh, pressure is also very, very strong. And yeah, so in the end, just uh, her game plan just rolls around, just making people crack and uh, going from there. And she definitely has the tool set for it. And in a pinch, uh, her uh, neutral game, while well, is not the best, to be sure, uh, it's a lot more serviceable than this style of character has. Uh, a comparable character in Android 17, and once again, we all know, uh, at least at the time of this recording, Android 17 is not a very good character. Uh, Videl is so much more well rounded than he is uh, with the great Siaman calls and all that kind of stuff and her built-in pressure is way better than his. Uh, so when it comes to opening people up and uh, playing solid if, uh, as a resort, if you're not able to get in reliably, at least early on, uh, she's pretty dang good at it, and uh, that's all there needs to really to be said. And so we come to the end of the video. So in the end, Videl's definitely got a lot of tricks up her sleeve here. Um, she's definitely, uh, when it comes to the scale of... Uh, Honesty or dishonesty if you want to put it that way. Uh, she's much more of a dishonest character uh, Not to say that's a bad thing, but she's definitely looking to uh, Kind of make you guess wrong and uh, win more on mix-ups uh, Rather than kind of more fundamental play like uh, Jiren the uh, companion DLC character Jiren is definitely a much more fundamental uh, style of play character than uh, Videl uh, but she definitely has the tools to make her game plan work. And on top of that, once again, uh, while you're not winning with this stuff here, uh, necessarily, uh, the Great Cyberman calls are actually pretty decent. Well, except for Down S. Uh, I've not much found much use for Down S, at least in my time with Videl. Uh, maybe there's some sick setup I'm not currently aware of. Uh, but uh, the other three calls are all pretty dang good. And in the end, uh, Videl is definitely a very unique character. Uh, I was surprised when she got announced to begin with, and uh, considering how her moveset works, I think uh, moveset-wise, style-wise, she's definitely a home run in that regard. Uh, she's definitely a fun character uh, in most regards. That's pretty cool. Anyways, anyways, I'm rambling a bit, so that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching, and go out and play some Dragon Ball.